Yes, yes, hello, ho, ho, ho. It's another edition of the hashtag holiday replay of the Gambling Fins, larger than live. We go back late summer to another house guest. This would be one Andy Furman. If you were a radio listener in greater Cincinnati or even beyond for years, Andy Furman was the host of Sports Talk on 700 WLW. Today, he's still a host of a national talk show sports variety on Fox Sports 1360, but he's also an infamous PR, public relations promoter. He's got some crazy ones. Most I wouldn't work today. We talk about that and a lot more. I figured I'd wear the UC shirt. They just won the AAC championship. Furman's a sports guy. You get it. And the Bearcats now take on Georgia in the Peach Bowl. So we hope you enjoy this. It's Gambling Fins, Larger Than Live, hashtag holiday replay. Another one of our special holiday house guests. This one, back Andy Furman. Enjoy. Yes, yes, hello. It's another edition, larger than live, reality check, house guest here on the back 40. I don't, I'm, there's too damn many names. Too many names. I'm done. It's Gamble and Finn with a very special guest. He would have been the first, but yeah. we got uh, called on remote to the road show out to the Starlight Drive in for the uh, How We Looking. And as we learned, out of that, not, not good. good. But he would be another than media personality, PR guru, and a man who literally mumbled to himself before we went on. I've never had someone sit next to me and say, the ass is hurting before (laughs) he would be, and please explain yourself, he would be the one, the only Mr. Andy Furman. Well, before I explain that, you know, really following Catherine Nero is is tough. It's like Beauty and the Beast. It (laughs) really is, number one. Number two, I got a case of sciatica, and if you've, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, the pain in the rear end. Shoots down to the knee, so uh, I got the blue emu on there, rubbing it in, and my wife's rubbing it in. So it's 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 getting better. It's getting a little. Now, better. what causes that? Do you? I, I just think that uh, maybe old age. I don't know. I think exercise. I was doing some some sit ups on an inclined board. I may have just pulled it the wrong way. I don't know. So I'm I'm working it out. I go in the pool almost every day. Try to swim it out. So it, it's getting better. So thank you, you. You know what? Honestly, you meant you make mention of that. You actually, I haven't seen you in years. You look great. Yeah. You look better than Good. you did last time I saw you. Ten years ago, You know maybe. why? I'm not working. Yeah, that, that could yeah, be it. no pressure. Well, this guy uh, just had his birthday on <laughs> Monday. You. He's getting younger. You're getting younger. I'm the only one that's getting birthday. fatter and Thank earlier you. as Thank I you. get older. Yeah, and I'm I'm still working, and, and that's the cause for <laughs> losing weight as well. And aggravation. And it nerves. is. Right, yeah. and staying up at night. Can't sleep. Now, you're still doing radio, though. You're right. doing Fox Sports Radio. I mean, right. you've been doing that for how many years now? About ten years now. I was uh, For about five years, I was the morning guy with Mike North from 6 to 9 on the East Coast. And now, like this Saturday, I'm on 4 to 8, and Sunday morning, 6 to 9. And the good news is I do it from my home. Yeah. Which is great. That's one that goes down Now, is it just underwear. you, or do you do other I do it with Brian No uh, on Sundays, and this Saturday I'm doing it with uh, Bucky, but I forgot his last name. I forgot he played in the NFL. Just so. call him Bucky. You know, it's crazy because you're doing it. You never see the guy you do it with. with Brian No on Sundays in Portland. So I'm on at 6 in the morning. It's 3 in the morning there. When he, oh, he's my gosh. He's poor. Poor Brian. I know. Now, do you, and that's got to be tough. I mean, I, I know with a lot, we, we we never we don't say the word other than call it the c word. But I know there are there are radio shows where people aren't even in the same studio. Yet, I mean, they're doing the show together in the same building, but they can't go in the same studio. I got to believe when you're doing it that way, that's got to kind of suck. Doesn't well, it? initially when I started doing it, when we did the morning show, Mike North was in Chicago and I was here. And I did it from home, and one of the station managers says, you know, you ought to get on t- uh, on your computer. I said, look, I, I can't multitask. I'm not going to look at my notes, talk to Mike, and then look at a picture of Mike on the, on the computer. Yeah. So, that went by the boards. It worked out. It really. So I talked to somebody on the telephone. 
Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're talking about what you're doing now, and you're still on the radio. I think let's reset just a little bit for those oh, yeah. who are watching right now who did not have the benefit of your wisdom during oh. the sports talk days at WLW and really have no idea because I didn't know until I read your full bio, as or as I like to call it, the world's longest run-on sentence. Right. Um, it's like a roll of toilet paper. All of the different things that you had done. I mean, you are, you are a media fiend, uh, a typewriter guy, a stamp and mail, snail mail kind of guy, and we have plenty of stories from back on Frogs Mountain when I used to see you in your office. But let, let's reset, and you, and you better than anybody, Fred, could, should be able to kind of set this guy's table for him here. Well, I mean, let, you know, you, you're from Brooklyn, yes. and you went, in, and don't tell it now, but you went to Lafayette High School because I want you to tell the story because I know you had a famous classmate who maybe wasn't known for his athletic prowess. Don't do it now. <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong, Lafayette High School has – more Major League Baseball players, inclusive of Sandy Koufax, than yes. any other high school in the country, Correct. right? Correct. Correct. That's pretty impressive. You know what? Uh, I've read that about Sandy Koufax, and this is a little piece of uh, trivia for me. My dad played baseball for Louisville the year that Sandy played for UC. Oh, wow. And wow. he used to tell me all the time, he's like, I struck out Sandy Koufax, and I walked around thinking that was the greatest thing ever. And then about 25 years later, I'm like, wait. You're supposed to be able to strike out Sandy Koufax. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yes. But he said, I go, did he strike your head? He goes, oh, yeah, every single time. But I saw that in your bio. I had no idea. That's, that's an amazing number of people that kind of came out of that small. I don't know if they graduated, but they played in the major leagues. Yeah. Huh. Well, because they may have gotten. Oh, maybe, yeah. 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 So then you got into. John Franco, too. Oh, yeah, player. John Franco. That's right. You may, then you got into the world of what the, at the time was sports information director. Today it's probably athletic communications. The vernaculars change. But, right. I mean. You did some PR, and then you went from there. You got into really horse and harness racing, you worked for Delaware North, and went to a multitude of tracks. You did all this for a number of years before, and that's where you kind of got known for all of your kind of PR stuff that I guarantee you if you tried to do, and we'll get to some of these, but if you tried them today, you would uh, the furlough would be kind be to you. Yes. You know, honestly, I'm almost afraid to talk about them. You know, really, in this day and age, I mean, you, you slip of a tongue – you're off the air. I mean, but I'll talk about it because yeah, you guys. You're you know, fine. Here. I love you guys. This is care. a safe I don't care. space. I don't care. I'll talk about it. <laughs> and then from there, you you wound up in, in in well, you were in television. For those who may not remember, oh, I remember because I was the sports information director at NKU when you were the sports director at WLWT at Channel Five. It's funny because Tony Kiernan uh, hired me out of the. I, never, I didn't know anything about TV. And he says, look, I'm going to hire you a sports director. And if you don't like it, you come to my office one day and let me know. We'll do something else. So I was there for like six months. And I went to his office and said, I can't stand this. I said, you work eight hours a day for two minutes. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I think I could sell. And at that time, Channel 5 had the over-the-air Cincinnati Reds games. So he gave me a telephone book and shoved me in the back office. And I did it. But thank goodness, I made a sale that it'll never happen again. I found a needle in a haystack. I, uh, I sent a note to uh, P&G to their product top job, which is an oven cleaner. And I said, we need to have the top job of the game award. And we have the weekly sales meetings and everybody's, oh, let me hear your reply. Never happened. You got to go through the agency in New York. I said, I sent them a letter. What do you want from me? Right? The girl calls me at the product manager. Go to our office and there was a picture of Paul O'Neill behind the desk. I said, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. She says, how much does this deal cost? I said, I couldn't get it out. I said, 165000 So uh, she says, we'll do it. I went nuts. I came by Tony Kiernan and hugged me, kissed me. Two days later, I got a call from the late J. David Martin. I loved him to death, the general manager of WLW Radio. He says, I want to have lunch with you. Come home. I tell my wife, I says, guess what? I'm working at WLW Radio. He says, what are you talking about? He wants to have lunch with me. When you have lunch with a boss, he's either going to fire you or hire you. So he takes me out to La Normandy, and I said, before we order, I said, the answer is yes. He started laughing. He said, what do you mean? He said, you're going to hire me. He did. And he said, you'll sell reds here. And then he created Sunday morning sports talk with Tom Dinkle and me, and, and that's how it started. Yeah, and that started. And then that morphed into you doing sports talk six to nine, Monday through well, Friday. I do it with Chris. Chris, Chris Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth, right. Yeah. started with Chris. Yeah, he was hardly ever there. Yeah, right, right. So they gave it to me, and, uh, and that's, that's it. Yeah. How many years did you do that? You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out because I don't even know what day it is today, but I, I think it was like uh, maybe 10 years, maybe nine, yeah. ten yeah, years. Yeah, I think the bio said nine, and both he and yeah. I agreed. We Seems thought like it was you did it longer. Than that. Really? Yeah. Maybe, I, I don't know. I know I was there. I think I was there for 18 years. Yeah. So maybe it was longer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you miss that day? I mean, and I know, you know, you hear people and in the business, as we all know, has changed so much. And I would argue not for the better at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really hasn't. I will tell you, it's funny, while you're there, while you're in that so-called bubble, you don't think of anything else from the outside world. That's your life. And now I'll, I'll lay down by the pool with my radio on outside, have a cigar, 
and I'll listen to Lance at WLW at 6 o'clock, and then he's on like after the game, and I said, man, I did that. And look what I'm doing now. I don't know if I'd want to do it. And at that point in time, my boys were very young. I hardly saw them. I came home at midnight after extra innings, oh. and I'd get up in the morning to take them to school because my wife had to go to teach, so I took them to school. It was rough. You know, you you mentioned that. And, and last week when Catherine Nero was here, we were talking a lot about pivoting and going from what she was doing unceremoniously being jackbooted and then having to go on. She said the exact same thing. You get in it, and you are so in it, you can't see from the outside in. And then when you get a chance to look to the outside in, you think, Good God, what what are those smells? What am I seeing? There's what are those colors? Yeah. Yes. And and I think he and I have seen a lot of that too, which is one of the right. reasons that we're we're exploring this and, and getting out and trying to do different things too, because you do get to that point where you think there is more than just this thing that I dedicated yeah. myself to. Right. Well, and I can tell you a lot of people may not realize this, but but after you they offered me that job. And I can remember I, I had kind of given them a verbal that I would take it, and it was a Friday night and I was driving home. And I had that epiphany before it started, and I thought to myself, because they wanted me to do extra innings, and I thought, man, all summer long, and, and even if people would say, well, you know, the game's going on, you're not doing anything, but you're still there. You're watching the right. game. You're on till midnight, and I thought. It's not heavy lifting, but it's. It's it, not it, heavy lifting, but it's still, it's the time commitment, and, yeah. and, it's, and I'm not somebody who likes to wait. I know it sounds goofy. I don't like to wait around to work. I like to get yeah. up and get after it and do it. And that, to me, work well, until midnight was not appealing. Well, the hardest part of the, what we do on Thursday nights on LW is yeah. sitting there from 8.30 to 9 going, right. right, are we ready to go? Well, waiting for those ball games to end and looking at what's going on during right. the games, it's it's crazy. It really is. So, but, well, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. But when, when you departed from, we'll just say departed. I was uh, let go. Yeah, you were yeah. let go. And maybe you can or can't talk about this, but so many people know you as this wild, bombastic, flamboyant air personality and all these things. Really? I but, never knew that. Well, <laughs> now again, people that know you off the air think, how is that guy that guy? But where, do you agree or do you feel like the way that I felt and many others did, you were let go for being who they wanted you to be? You know, I watched and, the Catherine Nero show, and she held her tongue pretty good about Channel 9 because she got royal screwed. She did. Yeah, Going yeah. to work one day, so you're gone. In the same situation, and I don't care who you are, when you are let go of any job, there's a bitterness. You know, there's a three, three-pronged thing, I think. First is shock, then there's bitterness, and then there's almost hatred, mm-hmm. really. And, and I was bitter because I was let go, obviously, without cause. I had a year and a half left on my contract. They paid me off. And, and I think they, and when I was let go, there was 19 other people let go at the same time. So I think it was a money thing. And I was told later on it was a money thing. And uh, I don't believe that. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. Because without, and a lot of times when you let go of that, it's six month non compete. Well, I was let go in November and I started that super talk in January. So they let me, they gave me everything I wanted. And, I think, and, and I was supposed to have a meeting. I, I haven't said this publicly, but I'll tell you now. I was supposed to have a meeting on Friday, Friday afternoon with some district guy from, at the time, Clear Channel and Daryl Parks. Well, Daryl never showed up at the meeting. He never showed up. And at, at that point in time, it's, it's like, you're gone. And that was it. And, and I said, why? And they, they never told me why. That yeah. was the thing. So it's crazy. Yeah, they did the most dangerous thing, left it open to interpretation. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, now let, let's go back to, to, to PR for the you. fun stuff. I mean, the fun stuff. Right. Because I know, and, and, and you're right. I mean, I think some of the, and, and how, let me ask you just a general public relations question. How much has that changed from then to now? Well, I think the key, the, 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 the tes- dissemination of media. Because I know when I first started, I'd be spending half a day stuffing envelopes, which they don't have to do now. I mean, the email is tremendous. It really is. But I think you have to be a little more careful as to what you're going to promote because, uh, Back in the day, and you remember this, when they used to have like a series on TV, Radio Wars, one station attacking another. You don't see that now. You don't even see promos on one station attacking another station. And I don't know why. No, you see promos on one station for another station. Right. Yeah. That, right. that was the day it all ended for me. Mm-hmm. I just thought this is when they were hiring promotions people to go out on the streets and they would work for multiple stations. That's not why anybody got kids got into radio. They found the one station they loved, and that's what they wanted to do. And they didn't want to go. If they worked for EBN back in the day, they didn't want to go work for you know, the the easy listening station or this or that. Yeah, and I remember that promos on radio. It said, why would you listen to AM when they had the crackling noise when sure. you're driving under a tunnel? Don't listen to AM, listen to FM radio. You don't hear any promos like now. You know, I, I, they're afraid. I think it's fear. I really do. Well, ba- uh, back in the day, too, we used to, when, when I came in, because Super Talk is what ended up becoming 96, 96 Rock, Rock right. which is where he and right. I started working together. Yep. Uh, he was with Skinny, and then later on it was he and I, and then we moved over into Norwood. But I remember very distinctly 
people talking about the consultants, and there's that uh, word again, don't talk about iPods. Don't talk about iPods. Don't talk about iPods. And I'm like, why wouldn't you talk about iPods? Right. Because an iPod has never played a new song for you. Uh, it's a completely regurgitory system. It plays back what you put in it. So we're the ones that are supposed to be telling you what to put in it. That's our job. And that has all been lost. And so, and I think part of the broadcast part of it, I mean, we talked about this before we went on. Radio, it's, it's, it's dying a slow death as has been predicted, but it doesn't have to be. Right. It, you know, maybe I'm the only one that thinks that. No, but I it think doesn't that have, if it's done right. right, it could be it could it be could. great because it's still free. But you're not. But you have too few companies own too many stations, and exactly. the competition isn't there like right. it once was. To his well, and point, I think yeah. the management. You know, I, I don't think they're they're on top of it. I don't think they're knowledgeable enough. I mean, we had a, something pretty good going at Super Talk. I was yeah. doing the afternoons, and you and Skinny were doing the mornings. Yeah. And after a year, they pulled the plug, and they made it a country station. I think. Yeah. Did they go to country? Well, no, it went to it went to uh, ninety six oh, rock. rock. We did, but and, which has been successful, which is really yeah. targeted straight at WEBN over the years. And I, I just I remember I mean I was on eleven sixty Bob that went out and bought the Bengals radio rights for three years. Right, and it was simulcast at the time because WUB and ninety six was country at the time. But I mean that's what you don't have anymore. That that real. Competition with yeah. cutthroat and going at the opposite, which is great. It, it, it is great. It's, yeah. That's when radio was fun. Well, and that's when the creativity Correct. and the things that you were talking about that you don't even know you could talk about today came into play. The number of things that I, I've got a whole list of things I wanted to do at 96 Rock that we were never allowed to do. Uh, EBN, we were able to do most anything we wanted to do. Not because, now, not anymore. No, not today. Well, they don't do anything. But anymore. I remember when I first started at WLW, I was in awe of the news guys. You had guys like Bill Ride now, and may he rest in peace. Don Webb, may he rest in peace. Big time news guys, and they'd run into the newsroom to see if 55 KRC would scoot them on a news story. Yeah. You don't see that anymore. Back the same guys doing news for both. Right. Well, same guys doing news for uh, other markets. Yeah. Right, markets they don't even know much about. Hey, it's a uh, house guest here on the back 40 for Gamble and Finn. The reality check it's larger to leave? than live. No, no, no. So this, this is a reset. This is a reset. You remember that? That's what they yeah, remember the business the reset. Tease across. We don't have breaks, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about teasing across the break. But he would be Andy Furman, media personality for a lot of years, and PR guy. So I want to take you back again to PR. Hmm. When you think about, let's go to Latonia because for those who don't know, before it became Turfway Park Racecourse, how weird is it, by the way, when you drive by now and it's leveled? Wow. It's weird, wow, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The, really fan, the, the construction. I got fence. married there. That's right. You yeah, did get married, married there. Yeah. yeah. How about that? So let, let's talk about. Just give me some of the promotions that you did at Latonia. You know, before Latonia, say I always thought I, I worked at St. Francis College in Brooklyn, which is a Division One school. I shared an office with Brother Roger, and he was the best. I mean, every Friday afternoon he'd open up the bar two in the afternoon. The two of us would have a couple of drinks. But in New York City, you're competing with so many other institutions as well as pro teams to get space in the papers. So you have to look at something that's unusual, unreal. We had a cross-country kid, and every year I hand out, and you know this, information sheets, name, yep. address, yep. height, weight, uh, awards that you won, your phone number. And I noticed on one kid's sheet that he had shrunk an inch from his junior to his senior year. So it was the incredible shrinking man. That was a story. And these are the things that you you have to send out. Every school is a 20-point-per-game average basketball player. But you have to find some stories that are uniquely different and you could squeeze in in, in the in – the, I guess the New York City media. That's that's how it started for me. So in, in harness and horse racing, obviously, when oh. you look at the mainstream sports, that was definitively the right. exception of the Derby and the Triple Crown races, Breeders' Cup, whatever. But I can remember some. Hit me with some at Latonia because I remember some. You were know, speaking of Chris Collinsworth. Yeah. Didn't you have him involved with? One? I had him race a horse, uh, but I did that at Monticello Raceway too before I came here. I did it three times, so uh, it gets better every time. So when I did it with Chris. He wasn't even in the final fin final finish picture. The photo finished because he was smoked so badly. So I realized you got to move him a little closer. But uh, at Monticello, we had Beasley Reese, who paid for the New York Giants. Mm -hmm. He did it. And Chris did it here. But it was a heck of a crowd. People want to see that. People want to be entertained. They want to have fun. That's what it boils down to. And uh, Chris agreed to do it. And he was a star. He was a media star then, really. And uh, it was it was great. It really was. A couple of things that we did. And, and it worked. Look, you're not going to sell racing. It's only a segment of the population that really enjoy horse racing. I never was at a racetrack until I worked at one. I never was interested in horse racing, really. Now, give me a couple that you did that you know today wouldn't stand a chance. All right. I always thought that ethnic nights would be a big hit. You know, you could promote them. I mean, the Reds do that, you know, Italian-American night. So I was at Buffalo Raceway, and I wanted to have Polish night. 
Okay, little did I know Buffalo is like 98% Polish, all right? So how do you promote Polish night? I go to the track superintendent, and our Buffalo race was right on the highway, and there was a big marquee sign outside. I said, you got to do me a favor and say Polish night tonight, post time 7 o'clock, but you got to spell Polish with a backwards P. Put the P on backwards on Polish night. What do you mean? I said, please, do me a favor. So I did it. I go upstairs to the office. I called the Buffalo Evening News. I said, some schmuck spelled Polish wrong at Buffalo Raceway. Made the front page of the paper the next day. So those are things. You, you do that today, you're in trouble. Really. Then, when we did have Polish night, I had the horses run around the track the wrong way. Backwards. You know, and the winning driver in the harness racing got a salami. And, uh, you, I, oh, I, today I, you wouldn't have a pr- No, not, not I wouldn't a have a pray. I'd be in jail. Really. <laughs> right. But I'd be burnt at the stake. But really, no one's hurt, and everybody had a good time. It was fun. But you can't do it today. Didn't you have a funeral director's night, too? I had that. I mean, there's you know, so many things. How did that work? I had a night for the KKK. That was unbelievable. I was, when I was at Monticello, and that got me fired at Monticello Raceway. 19, <laughs> this is 1980. Did uh, it now. <laughs> this, in 1980, I worked at Monticello Raceway, and obviously in New York State, there's off-track wagering, so people don't go to the racetrack. They go to a parlor to make a bet. But we were, like, right near the Pennsylvania border, and there was no off-track wagering in Pennsylvania, so I would subscribe to the Pennsylvania papers, Scranton, whatever it may be. Well, I was getting the Scranton paper, and there was, like, a five-part series on the KKK. Interesting. Front page, right? To this day, I'll never forget the guy's name. The Grand Wizard in PA was named Albert Lentz. I wrote Albert Lentz a letter. I said, come to race, come to Monticello Raceway. Leave the sheets at home. We'll have a night for you in the dining room, the whole deal. I Xeroxed it, sent that out to everybody. It went all over the place. The New York State Racing and Wagering Board, you know, you have to get a license in every state when you work at a track. They revoked my license. I got fired. And it was like all over the place. Sports Illustrated, but bang, bada bang, all over. And uh, when I got fired... About two, th- I got calls. I got calls from circuses, minor league baseball, sure. all over for jobs. I held out a little bit, and then I got a call from Delaware North in Buffalo. They flew me out to Buffalo, and the guy said, "If you ever did this one of our racetracks, we wouldn't fire you; we'd kill you." And I said, "What?" And I looked up the history. It was like the mob that ran the Emprise Mob was Delaware <laughs> North, and he said, "We'll start you off at Buffalo Raceway." And I went to Buffalo Raceway, and I, I thought it was a good move to work for Delaware North because they own so many facilities. That's how I ended up here at Latonia. Because I wouldn't get fired, I'd be transferred. And I was transferred all over the place. But you didn't do mob night, like, right oh, out of the no. shoot. No. The good thing is I never did the same stupid thing twice. Yeah. Which is well, really Now, nice funeral direct, didn't you give away a funeral? Uh, a funeral in a casket, yeah, the whole deal. You know, I forgot where I did that. That was, that was pretty good. But, you know, that doesn't hurt anybody. It's expensive to get that, really. No, and it's funny because, like we were talking about, some of the things that uh, I had a chance to do at EBN, I mean, it was a lot of the ask forgiveness versus permission. Right. I mean, yeah. We already had the apology already recorded before the thing ever started. Uh, we knew the cease and desist would be coming for this and the man, but the thing would not be on sale. Beyond, We, we kind of planned for the chaos, if you right. will, to a degree. Right. Certain things happened that we didn't know, but there were a couple of things. Um, that that I know that even we did that I, I in the back of my head you were kind of always in there I always thought oh. this would be a Furman kind of thing like when we did well you were there when we did Speedo night oh, yeah. at the Florence Freedom game right. I said I'll stand out in front in a Speedo if you show up in a Speedo you can come in for free and uh, so people like three or four came out with the nut huggers on and wow. they're looking at me and they're mad because I was wearing the Speedo trunks. But it, I didn't say that. But so, to your point about, you know, calling and saying that some idiot put the pee on backwards or whatever, it's b- b- t- having fun and manipulating people's brain right up to that line to see what you can do and what you can get away with is fun because then when they realize they're in on the joke, right? it's fun. Bob, we yeah. did a bobblehead night. You come on out. And normally on a bobblehead night, what happens? You come here to first 1,500 people, you get a bobblehead. Now, this night was come out and bring me a bobblehead, and I'll give you a ticket. So I collected a whole bunch of bobbleheads, and then the plan was the other night is to give them back out on another night and that kind of thing. But we had nights that we wanted to do, like, Johnny Bench Night, where if your name was Johnny, you got to sit on the bench with the team. That's great. You know, different things. But we never got to do any of that stuff because they, at that time, were taking themselves more seriously than, I think, minor league baseball that I was aware of. Yeah. You know, you talk about minor league baseball, and there was, uh, you know, the Florence Freedom, now the Florence Yalls, and when they were in transition, changing names, I wrote them a letter. I said, you should call your team the Florence Nightingales. Yeah. If if they're the nurse, Florence, but no response. Or Florence Hendersons. Right. I will give them, I still will give them, they had the Manti Teow bobblehead. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Where they just literally gave you, because of the girlfriend that wasn't, they gave you an empty box that did not contain a bobblehead. Do you remember the one that we did as well that was, and you would have been proud of this one, I think, it was fan appreciation night and we picked one fan of the radio station and we printed headshots of him in a suit 
and we I printed 500 this. copies of this and put him under the tent and said he would be out there signing autographs. It was fan appreciation night of one fan. <laughs> People were lined up to get his autograph. That's had great. no idea who he was. That's one one guy fun. came up later and goes, hey, man, uh, can I get one for my brother, too? He can't wow. get up here. And this guy, Gary something or other, I forget what it was, but it was just one fan appreciating, and no one knew who he was, but they lined up to get his that's autograph because they thought that's you what they were supposed You don't get much of that do. anymore. You really and, and, really and why can't, I mean, really, why can't you get, I mean, I don't understand why the creativeness has been stymied. I'll tell you why. We don't even have the circus anymore. Ringling yeah. Brothers is gone. Yeah. So th- that answers the question right there. I mean, the circus is fun. Did it hurt anybody? It's over. Yeah. No Barnum, yeah. yeah, you're right. Novak and all those guys. Right. You mentioned the typewriter. So for anybody who <laughs> knew furball, and I can still remember up in Mount Adams walking by, you had that little office, which was brutal. Uh, you were packed in there. You had the bookcases with all the nonsense on it, and you'd all, you could always tell he was there because you'd hear just the pecking of the keys at the typer. How did that – and you still – Assuming you can get the right parts today, you still right. do that, right? I have a couple of IBM Selectrics at home, but two of them are in the shop right now, and they've been in the shop for a couple of months. Can't get parts for the darn thing. But, uh, you know, I've always, you know, you start on a typewriter, so it's, uh, that's what I've done. And, you know, I do type on uh, on the computer, but I, I, I like the sound. I like the feel on the typewriter. Yeah. I really do. It's something about it. And, and, you, and you still write? You send literally? All the time. Letter. But I'll write a letter on, on the computer, and I'll print it out because <laughs> it looks a lot neater. But the envelope that I send it on is always with a typewriter. Well, you know, if somebody was smart, they would come up with an app that would make that sound when you type right. on a laptop yeah. to give you that sensory feel. Right. My favorite part about that little office, and you would walk, I remember you'd walk up the halls like the H part of the building yep. right. over to the little lunchroom. My favorite part of it was because <laughs> you, were, you were the only person that would could still smoke in the building. Nobody else was allowed to smoke right. in the building, right. but the cigar yeah. would always be sitting over there. And I was right by the postage machine. Right by the postage right. machine. But I always thought to myself, I thought, the one guy that's still allowed to smoke in this building is in a room full of tinder. I mean, oh, yeah. if oh, one yeah. ash goes up, there's newspapers and all of this other stuff, and I'm thinking, oh my God, it'll go. It'll. <laughs> When I was told that when I left, someone found like five boxes of envelopes under my desk. Yeah. I think uh, the Yid man told me that story. Because I used to hoard those things and go through them. Yeah. You know? Didn't you work into your contract where you got to have so much postage? No, I would never do that because they put a limit on it. <laughs> I just never, took no, it. I just, I, I, you know, uh, uh, who would you, I think... Uh, Steve Summers' son, I would whatever I was Sean Summers. I mean, the, oh yeah, Sean. Well, yeah. Sean. He he worked the postage machine, so yeah. he'd give me the key, and I could run through it all the time. So. He's like a super vice president. WGN now with, within yeah with really? NGN or the whatever. Tribune, yeah. He was one of my interns uh, at Is EBN, and we sent him out to deliver some pizzas to an office party um, for a lunch thing, a lunch promotion. And he got back. We're like, everything go okay with the delivery? He goes, yeah, it went great. We got a call from that office. They go, one of our pizzas had two pieces missing. And we called him in, and we go, did you eat those? He goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, that is great. Now, you uh, actually, though, were, were corresponding back and forth via type. You found a famous actor, right, who also types. Well, I bought this book. It's 35 bucks if anybody wants it. addresses of everybody of any, who's anybody. And Tom Hanks' address is in there. And I'm, I'm looking right now. I'm working with, and you know him, uh, J. Bruce Miller, out of Louisville. Mm-hmm. He's tried to get an NBA team for years in Louisville. He tried to get the Vancouver Grizzlies, and they ended up in Memphis. So I'm working with him, but I'm at the same time writing letters to people who could be potential investors. You know, you never know until you hit on one. I wrote a letter to Larry King, and uh, this is about a year or so ago, and three, four days later he called me. I said, you know, we went to the same high school. He went to Lafayette High School. I, hey, and he started singing the, the alumni song, and uh, but he never, he never got off the schneid. He, you know, who's going to be involved? And I'd had Bruce Miller call him, and he was supposed to meet Bruce in Louisville. He never showed up. And now his son died, I think, about a week ago, Larry King. Yeah, his son's 65. Ch- die very his son is 65. Yeah, wow. I know. So I don't know if Larry King is still on board, but uh, we'll see. But, but Tom uh, Hanks, right? But Tom he, Hanks. He, I wrote to Tom Hanks asking him that. He wrote back, and he typed it back. And he said, this is tight. You could tell it was a typewriter. I've written back and forth to Tom Hanks. And he's been great. I mean, a lot of people do write back. Most of them ignore you but I, I write to most most people I think might be interested who's the biggest surprise that's ever sent you a letter back yeah, you know what I uh, just the other day I got a letter back from uh, Governor DeWine and uh, I, I found his home address in Cedarville Ohio and there was an article in the New York Times comment you know, just really praising him I put ripped it out wrote a little note stay safe thought you'd like this three days later I got a letter back from DeWine handwritten and he says I had missed this one thank you so much so once people do that they're sucked in there's on my mailing list now because today there was a great article in the in the Wall Street Journal about that Ohio football thing 
that the you know the right. high school yeah. could play the high schools and that's it. So I ripped that out, mailed to him in Cedarville. Well, and I don't think a lot of people know that that's what you do. You find an article about you sent an article, I think, to us. Yeah. When we had something popped up in the paper and we got something, I think in, people appreciate that. From you, you, you do. do. You're, you're just your own clip I, service. You know, and like yeah. every time I ever had a guest. On radio, I always wrote him a thank you note because they give up their time. Yeah. I think they appreciate it. And that's how I got to know Bobby Knight. When I lived in New York City, he was coaching Army. I used to bombard him with letters. Then he went to Indiana. I came out over here, and he'd go on the radio with me. You know, I got Bill Belichick on Fox Sports Radio about a year ago because for the letters. And I once asked him, can I use you as a reference? He says, I'm not going to write you a reference letter. Just put my name and phone number down there. If they want anything, tell them to call me. So I got his cell phone number. Now, you have a unique story if you use references now, right, of some of your Oh, bosses. yeah, because most of the people that I work for are dead. So I put their <laughs> name on my resume, and then if they call them up, sorry, that's the way it is. You're too late. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, now, speaking of dead, okay. Oh, boy. This is this is back to what you told me, he told you, but you wouldn't tell right. me, so okay. he can tell me. Oh. So if you remember, you, you no. joined me for the Skyline Chili Crosstown Showdown at oh. Dixie Heights High great. School. Yeah, we had a lot of fun out there on site last year. And I asked you a question about, we were talking about some of the alums of your high school. Oh, man. And you drew, but you dropped. It's like a police blotter. Yeah, really. so give me the one. Well, the, the first one, in my senior year, there was a football quarterback. He was tremendous. Herman Bell. And you could Google Herman Bell's name. Herman Bell was a great quarterback. I thought he might even be a pro. Well, about a year or so ago, right around the time I was on with you, there was a big article out of Arizona. He killed somebody. He's in a prison in Arizona now. I said, Herman Bell, I mean, he was a good guy. He used to sit next to me in English class, really. He used to cheat off me, really. And uh, I, I was shocked. But the biggest shock was Jeffrey Epstein went to my high school. You know, That's yeah, really. Yeah, yep. you so we, had a, we have a, a lot of personalities, all those baseball players that went to the pros. But we also have some screwballs that went there, too. So, and I didn't know Jeffrey Epstein. I didn't know anything about Jeffrey Epstein. Matter, I didn't know he went to my high school until years later, until like when he was really in the public wow. eye. I guess the one thing at least you can say that you have in common is you're both well hung. Well, I don't know about that. Huh? No, 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 I don't think so. I have to check with my wife on that. <laughs> and she works on your sciatica. Oh, yes, she does. <laughs> yes. Yeah, two different interpretations of the phrase. But so what do you want to do now? I mean, what? I mean, do you, you, ever, know, I, you want to do this Well, I mean, week? there's enough yeah. going on. I mean, uh, the Redwood situation, to help out the Redwood. You were a guest. You were great. Right. You yeah, were great. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, you know, for those I'm, who don't know, it's a Redwood school. It's in northern Kentucky. Special needs. Give a little, yeah. Yeah, Redwood special needs in Fort Mitchell and... Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a great situation, really. But I'm on furlough now because they don't allow any outsiders in the building. And there's a kind of a decrease in the kids that are going there because I think parents may be afraid. So yeah. we'll see what happens. So I'm on furlough there. And, uh, you know, do a radio on Fox like twice a week, perhaps, which isn't bad. Do that from home. And uh, that's basically it, you know. So uh, I mean, do you want to still do something? You know, I, I, think, I think the piss and vinegar is still there. I, I think I still got it. I don't think I'm one of those guys who want to go fishing every day. And I don't play golf. You know, so I'd love to work. I really do. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but I want to keep on working. And, you know, something, there's got to be a fit. There's got to be a fit. That's the thing right now. And I could be somewhat selective now rather than just saying I need a job. So we'll see. You know, I'm willing to move if the if the deal is good. Man. Well, I would tell you, it's like I said, when I was reading through it, and, and it's funny to say read your bio because I feel like I've no, I'm, hell, I've known you right. 30 years. But to read through all of that and only know 10% of everything that was in there. Well, I was a teacher. You know, I, I had no oh, idea about right. that. Yeah. I had no idea about that. But to think about all of that different stuff, and I, I got a feeling that this is a part one of a two, part two sort of oh, series. No, oh, yeah, no, we you. love we got to have you, you come. You don't want me back here. We do, because I think we've barely scratched the surface on some of the stories. Well, to tell you how far we go back, I remember when I was at the Cincinnati Post, God rest it. My wife used to deliver the overnights. She did, absolutely. Yes. When he was at the track, Wendy, his wife, Brought us the overnights and yeah. sent in the entries right, right. and would call in and right. a lot of times call me. Did you get them? It's amazing. Yeah, it is. That's, it, it's, that's know, a long time. You know, ago it's amazing. Too. The, the three of us, we've seen the transformation of media and how it's transformed. I mean, really, because I remember there was no computers and we had to. Uh, I don't even know how we got the results into the newspaper. Did we just call them in or telecopy them? I think, well, I think they, they were telecopy. Yeah, we, telecopy. And somebody would send them in, and we'd have to we type, type them, them up in. and send a telecopy. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how things have changed. And I was a poor loser on the other end. You used to have to type them back in. And I remember Mike Bass was he when he was a sports editor of the Post. He asked me if I would do a weekly column, like a notes yep, column. For I the remember Post. that. So I started doing that, but I would type it. And, and send it on the fax machine. Yep. He called me up one day. He says, I'm going to tell you right now. If you continue to type it and fax it, we're not going to run the column. He said, we don't have time to reset it. And, you know, do. He says, you've got to send it on a computer. 
So I got some lessons on how to do it. It's so much easier with spell check, and you could save it as a file. You know, <laughs> This is great. the best part. because yeah, The best is- part is I'm starting to feel savvy. Is- <laughs> I'm starting to feel tech savvy. You're welcome here anytime. Yeah. And this is the part where we say share this on social media. Right. Thanks. Like, share. <laughs> like, share. And Do you subscribe. have a customized URL on your YouTube, uh, YouTube channel? channel? Is that something you eat? Yeah. <laughs> it is. I have no idea. It's, a, what you're it's talking one about. of those uh, Frank's hot. I, I get it. I get by with what I need to do. I can answer the phone. I can send a text. I can send an email. That's it. But what yeah, else? Yeah, we is text. There? Attachments. Yeah, I can do. Good. You know what else is there? I mean, honestly. see, I like. See, for me, what this, else is there to do? I mean, really. I and mean, really, I'll tell you something else. The greatest form of communication is the telephone. I mean, people texting, wow. I just, it's impersonal. And you don't know how to take the text. Are they serious? Are they, you know? And your kids, how old are your boys? Oh, 28, 27. God, that's crazy. See, I my know, daughter just, yeah. this is her freshman year in college. And I said to her, after two months back and forth with her potential, with her ultimate roommate for her freshman year this year, I said, so she's from Jersey. And I said, so when you talk to your roommate, I said, does she have brothers and sisters? She goes, I don't know. I said, what? you've been talking to her for two months and you don't know? She goes, well, not really talking. I said, what do you, well, I'm texting. In the same I, room. I said, you've ne- no, this is before they even oh, got to school. Oh, right, right I said, so you've never even heard her voice on the phone? No, we've never actually spoken to each other for two months and they've decided they're going to live together. And I said, what if, she's from Jersey. What if she has one of those like accents from the Jersey Shore and you just want to murder right. her? The minute you meet her, she's from a mob family. Yeah, like Like this. But turned out to be very lucky. But you're right, the whole talking. I mean, when the last thing you think to do with your phone is talk on it, we've we've entered a whole new era. Well, you know, right now with the political situation the way it is, I mean, I'm I'm like in the middle. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know if Democrat, Republican. But I do know one thing that's going to sway me, this postal thing. It's yeah. making me crazy with the post oh, office. Bet. The post office oh, is freaking me out because I know when I go, I go to the post office every day to mail out stuff, and I always get a receipt, and the receipt says when the package may be delivered. The tracking well, number. Well, normally, yeah. like if I mail something on Monday to like Cincinnati, it should get there Tuesday. I mail stuff today to Cincinnati, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Th- what's going on? Yeah. Really? I could walk there by Thursday. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's a factor in my voting. Look, you can tell by that hat he doesn't want you messing with his post office. Right. Yeah. Not in the least. You have any connections to the mob from back up in Hell no. Okay, well, I didn't Hell know. No. Me? Huh? I didn't know. No, I didn't know if you had any distance. They, they all went to my school. Everybody <laughs> in Lafayette High School, their, name, their last name ended in a vowel. <laughs> really? And I don't, my, you know, I don't want to blanket everybody whose name is in a vowel, but you know, Franco, John Franco, Bob and Ken Aspromonte, who played in the major leagues, yep. vowel, they all did. Al, Al the Bull Ferrara played for the Dodgers, Lafayette High School. Yeah. Or all with vowels, really. Did their uh, aunts hang Colfax, pot? Colfax, the one, the, the one Jew that played, really. <laughs> yeah. Did they hang positive from the beams in their basement to they dry? Went, you know, we used to go for lunch, Spamorni Gardens. That was the big place near Lafayette High School on Benson Avenue, really. All right. I went back for a reunion. This is about five, six years ago. I couldn't get into the school. It was locked up. And I remember 60 Minutes did a piece years ago, the toughest school in New York City. You couldn't get in. I told the guard, I went here. Can I just go in and walk the hall? No, I can't get in, can't get in. Chained down, unbelievable, really. Changed that much? Well, it's a different kind of school now. It's kind of like those, I don't even know what they call satellite schools or whatever. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's a different animal. The, the education system is it, crazy. crazy. Yeah, it is. Well, what isn't? But Everything. You got to promise to come back for yeah, a round absolutely. two. If you'll have me, I'll be here. Oh, we'll have you. Yeah, absolutely. We just talked about my drive. teaching as escapades. At Junior High School 59 in Queens. Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah. I can only imagine. Oh, yeah. How long did you teach? Two years. Is that Three. enough? Well, I was a sports. I wanted to be in sports, yeah. you know, and then I had the opportunity. But uh, it, it was a rude awakening. And the first year I got rolled over pretty good by the seventh graders. It really was <laughs> inner city. Was, I did well, enjoy The second year was, I got tougher. Bef- before we went on, I just remember hearing the phrase, yeah, there was one place I was there for one pay cycle. Buffalo uh, Raceway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After the Polish deal, one pay period. Oh, that Two that weeks. it? Yeah. yeah. And they sent me out to a place where basically you couldn't even have an ethnic night. They sent me out to Littleton, Colorado, to Centennial Park. You know, what do you got there? No ethnicity. Not, now it'd be great. There's drugs all over the place. And they're legal. <laughs> you can have pot night in Colorado yeah. now. We did a bag of pot night once with a Black Crow show. You'd have been proud of that one. Yes. We gave away I love a, you guys. We really. gave away a bag of pot. I'm going to come back that, and just talk with the, with the thing off, just to come back and talk. Oh, you're welcome any time. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll leave you go on this note. Correct me if I'm wrong. I remember when you were back at Channel 5. You, you'll remember this, I think. You came over to NKU because it was 
they were playing Kentucky Wesleyan, and Wayne Chapman was the coach, Rex Chapman's dad. Mm -hmm. And you did a live shot over there. But didn't you do some kind of wizard thing on there once – wasn't there something I'll have you to did? Look that up. I look that up. I swear was it you. Bad? It was bad. Well, I don't know I if don't it was know. bad. I, I just remember you did. No, you did something. You were the remember. wizard. You got to look. I'm telling you, you got to look I'll that I'll up. Check it out. Check it. You can't. Hell, if you can't remember, I don't, I don't remember. Maybe that was Jungle Jim. Really? Maybe that was Jim. Maybe he came over dressed Maybe. like a wizard. But no, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Come and join us. Anytime. I'd love yeah. to. Even Thank if we're you. not expecting you, just yeah, come Yeah, just on. pop in. Come, All you have to do is just walk just come around come the side, whatever come you want. Yeah, come tomorrow. Yeah. You're welcome anytime. Where's the next show? Who's the next guest? I'd come and watch, right? Uh, Well, it'll be on location next week. I'll be it's there. Lance. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you details. Yeah. Lance is good. He, he came to yeah. Redwood, too. I like Lance. He's a good dude. Yeah. He really is. He would never do any of what we're doing. He's... No. Straight. Well, and that's we'll okay. See. It's a- we'll see. We're, well, no, I mean, but he's going to come on with us. I'm I always gonna... thought, now, I hate to continue, I always thought he'd make a tremendous morning man on the radio. Oh, yeah. You know, because he's well, he's got his Jim scott yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And everybody likes him. Yeah. I think he'd be great in the morning. Yeah, you, but, people either have to love you or they have to hate you. If they don't care about you, you're done. Right. Right. You know, so that's where we've all been lucky. Yeah. Right. Everybody <laughs> hates everybody us. Hates us. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> well, I would tell you, this has been a good one yeah, because nobody encapsulates fun. The eras that we've been discussing here better than Dean Martin's ghost hat and Neo from the Matrix's glasses and everything in between. You got the you got the fashion down, man. I'm trying. I'll catch up eventually. You got to know. You're perfect. Yeah, really? you've, you've got it all encapsulated perfectly. Maybe you can go visit Herman Bell. <laughs> oh, send him cookies. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Send him a cake. Oh, my Drew, God. we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Good there to you see have you. It. Andy, for remember, like, share, tell a friend, and... Check out our customized URL. Yes, YouTube. subscribe. On subscribe. YouTube. I forgot the word. See, I can't get old. Make words sure right you either. subscribe. Subscribe. Thank there's you. A, if there's anybody that understands the word subscription, it's that guy. Yeah. So we need to get him on YouTube to subscribe. Absolutely. It doesn't cost a thing. Also, like and share and spread the word. That's what it's all about. Hell, we're going to go after the uh, Blue Emu sponsorship now, right. thanks to you, since it uh, seems to be working on your sciatica. So uh, we will continue. Our house guest series is stocked and locked and ready to continue rolling. We will do a part two with the fur ball. This has been a lot of fun, man. Thank you for spending the time. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. We will be back on the air actually tomorrow night. We will. On WLW 9 to Midnight, one of two shows that we've got planned for this month. That There are no reds, so make sure you check us out, 700 WLW, tomorrow night. 9 to midnight, and then back here on, well, no, uh, we'll be here on Monday. Yes. And then we will be next Wednesday with Lance from the Holy Grail. Yes, from the Holy Grail banks, even though they don't know that yet, but we'll get that worked Oops. out. Oops, all it's righty all then. No, Jimmy will be fine. It's Hope he's good. watching. All yeah. right. It's been fun. Thanks to that guy. Thanks to this guy uh, who just turned uh, f- uh, 21. 46. 46. This past Jesus. Monday. So thanks for checking it out. It's the Appreciate home edition. It. Larger than live. Gamble, Finn, and the Furball. And we'll see you next time.